Welcome to the Statistic and DD YouTube channel. Today we want to see how we can detect spurious correlations in R using simple linear models. The example I brought with me is probably the most famous example in statistics. Um, storks bring babies. You all know that. I learned it as a kid. Um, I didn't know it was just a theory. I thought it was truth. Now that we're working with data, we can test this. There's this quote by Dr. Edward Deming. Dr. Edward Deming, sorry. Um, in God we trust all other spring data. So let's have a look at the data set. You see it's very small and I admit to having constructed it. So it's fictional data, but you can find real data that also um, proves this association between babies and storks. So we have data from 10 regions and um, for each region the number of babies and the number of stalks is recorded. So let's create a simple linear model. Babies is always the dependent variable um, and here we just use stalks as a predictor and we look at the summary. Um, we won't interpret the units too much here because it's fic fictional data but we see the p-value is significant and we can interpret the sign so it's a significantly positive effect. So the more stalks there are in a region the, the more babies there are and this is really uh, an association that you do find empirically with real-world data as well. Um, so now we can say, yeah, we've proved this um, association, but then somebody might come along and say, this is a spurious correlation, I have learned a different theory, I don't believe that um, it's the storks that bring babies. I think babies um, come from somewhere else. <laughs> okay, so um, being truthful to this quote, all others bring data, we want to test this with data. So now it's not enough to just say we don't believe this theory, we must provide an alternative theory. Um, I've heard something about the size of the land that, that you might use. Um, I prefer to use the level of industrialization. I call it industrial here in the data. So I have an index for the level of industrialization of each region. So how does the theory go? It says that um, the level industri of industrialization <coughs> is a third variable that influences both the number of stalks and the number of babies in a region. So the higher the level of industrialization, the fewer the number of stalks, of course, the fewer stalks there are. Um, and as for the babies, um, it says that in higher industrialized regions, um, women tend to pursue their own careers more. Um, and then if they have babies at all, they have them later, whereas in rural areas, um, um, yeah, there are more babies, um, usually um, family roles are more traditional and women don't pursue their careers so often, so this could explain this association. So let's create a simple model that just uses the level of industrialization as a predictor on the number of babies um, and we look at the summary again and we see it's a significantly negative relationship. Um, so far so good, but now comes the most important part we use a model with both predictors. So we want to use, uh, we still want to test the effect of the number of stalks on the number of babies, but we want to use the level of industrialization as a control variable or a third variable, we could say. Um, so I create this model, and now for those of you who want to have their own go at interpretation, um, you can look at the model summary and you can pause the video now if you want to think about it for a while, like which conclusion would you draw from this result. All right, so let's see. We see the level of industrialization is still significantly negative. The effect size changed, um, or the coefficient changed a little bit, um, and the p-value is still um, significant. But the more important result here is that the effect of the stalks is not significant anymore. So this is the key finding. This p-value is not significant. Okay. So this is a fine example where a non-significant result is highly interesting. So this illustrates that the effect of the stalks was in fact a spurious correlation and um, this is explained when we use the level of industrialization as a control variable. So I hope you find this useful. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider subscribing the channel if you haven't already. All the best for your own data analysis and see you next time.